Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are continuing with our Easter theme. We are going to paint a very easy little fluffy baby chicken. But before we start, let's talk about a couple of things. Uh, I just started using these watercolor hardboards by Artist Sloth. I just happened to have a few of those left over from another project, and I thought, you know, that's probably going to make a really good substrate for taping down the paper. And actually, I love it. It's perfect because it's a hardboard, it's a light background, and if I get paint on it, I can just take a magic eraser and wipe that paint right off. Um, and it's easy to maneuver, so I don't have to tape it down to my desktop. So anyway, that's just a little tip if you want to give those a try. They come in a lot of different sizes. Um, so, you know, it can, you can use a size that's appropriate for your project. But, so the other thing I want to talk about real quick is, you know, when I first started out, I really didn't understand why some artists would wet their entire paper and they'll go back and forth back and forth you know using a flat brush and just keep going back and forth and i didn't understand why are they painting the whole or wetting the whole paper you know i knew it was prepping the paper for some reason but why so now i understand a lot of landscape artists will do that because they don't want any hard lines and they want their sky to blend in with the the ground very smoothly. I never used this technique because I'm not a landscape artist and when I do paint loosely I want more control over the paint. So for instance we just painted this bunny last week and this is very loose. I used a lot of water with my pigment, but I had more control over it. I didn't want it to spread out into my background. I wanted it to combine here on the bunny, but not out here. So you would not want to cover your whole paper in that situation so that it didn't leak out everywhere. Then sometimes I paint like this where extremely loose and and it is out into the background but i wanted more control over that as well and I, I don't mind these hard edges and even if you did you can go back and blend it out so i painted the flowers and then i took a very wet brush and just touched the pigment and allowed it to stream out in those places where I had put the water. So that's more loose than the rabbit, but it's still more control. I could have easily have done it the way we are going to do the chicken today, where I covered, you know, a portion of the paper even. That would have been fine as well, but it's a little bit different look. So those are the different situations where you would or you would not use completely covering your paper in water. But today, since we want this little chicken to be very fuzzy, we're going to completely cover our paper. And I really like sketching with watercolor pencils because they don't leave that harsh graphite line. And as you see, I just lightly traced him with an orange watercolor pencil. Uh, this is an artist loft, excuse me, an artist loft as well. And so the reason why you go back and forth is because you want the paper completely saturated. Well, okay, that's probably not an accurate description. Not, you don't want it saturated all the way through the paper. You just want a good sheen across the paper. And so this way we're making sure that we don't have any dry spots and we don't have any pooling. But we want enough water that it will stay wet long enough for us to paint this little chicken. 
And that's kind of the, <laughs> the tricky part is, okay, how much is too much, you know, so that there's not a lot of pooling and it doesn't just spread everywhere. And what's not enough so that it doesn't dry out. So I'm actually going to put just a little extra water here on his body and feather it out. And that's probably plenty of water. And as you see, the watercolor pencil is still there. It doesn't, now when I paint, I could take my paintbrush and kind of scrub it a little bit and that will make it completely dissolve, but just wiping back and forth this way does not make it completely disappear. So now I will take a little bit of yellow. So I'm using cadmium free yellow pale to begin with and I'm getting it fairly diluted down. I don't want it too strong to start. It's easier to start light and get darker. And I'm kind of going to the inside of that line a little bit just so I can test it out and see how much is it going to spread. And I want to avoid the beak. Although since it's going to be orange and a darker color, it doesn't matter quite as much. And the eye is going to be black, but I do want to leave a little bit of white around the eye. So I am avoiding the eye to control that a little bit. And because this will dry out fairly quickly, I want to work with intention. And you can download a picture from Unsplash to use as your reference photo, or even you could even trace it if you wanted to. Um, since Unsplash is a free use website, He's kind of in a little squatting position. You see, we've got a lot leaking out there, and that's okay. I don't care. I might clean that up a little bit in a minute. But okay, so now I think I'll deepen it a little bit. Now that I can see how far it's going to spread. And I'm not really painting it, I'm just dabbing it. I think I am going to add just a little bit orange, maybe, what color is this? Just the regular cadmium free yellow and a touch of cadmium free orange together to give some deeper color. And now I'll go ahead and make sure I cover up those little lines. I want that to blend out a little more. See, and I'm really allowing the water to do the work. And he'd probably be a little darker on his underside here. I don't want to touch the beak until this is completely dry or the eye because I don't want it to spread. Same thing with the feet. I'm going to take that deeper color and just mimic a little, little wing. Add a little texture. And we don't want to fuss with it too much. I tend to fuss with things a lot. And that's where I make my mistake is I just overwork it. So I am going to pick a little bit of this up. I'm going to wipe it once and 
you know, wipe it thin on your paper towel or your your towel, whatever you're using. Just wipe it once and then wipe it off. Otherwise, you're just spreading it around. So we'll kind of spread that out. Okay, let's wait for that to dry. Okay, our little guy is dry now, so let's do his beak. And I'm just taking cadmium free orange. I'll start out a little lighter and work up to some darker tones. Let that dry and we can go ahead and go to his feet. Um, so I'm going to add a little Scarlet Lake to that cadmium free orange to have a little deeper color for his little feet. And again, I'm trying to keep my head out of the shot, but it's very hard for me to see. So I'm just gonna wing it. great way to practice control with watercolors because you it will help you judge learn to judge your water on your paper and when to use this technique and not to use this technique of wetting the whole paper so I hope you'll give it a try I hope you have a very blessed Easter if you like this one, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe for more videos coming soon. Thanks.